Uh, Senator, where, where are we? I mean, sort of put, put this whole thing in context for us. Uh, manufacturing generally yes. uh, is what uh, really is, is my focus. Uh, and we've seen uh, manufacturing decline uh, in the United States relative to around the country. Other countries have uh, seen that uh, increase. Uh, I'm particularly focused on manufacturing because I believe uh, you can't be a great country unless, unless you actually are making things and making products that you can uh, sell around the, the world. Uh, we need to have a focus. We haven't had a focused national strategy or policy on manufacturing ever. If you look at our international competitors, uh, they take it very seriously, whether it's the South Koreans or the Germans and other countries that have manufacturing policies. I think it's very important for us to be more focused than we are right now. Senator, though, do you think it's a myth when people say, look, these jobs are never really coming back to the United States and that actually we don't want these jobs? Well, I think, one, it's, uh, it is a myth because uh, we can bring those jobs back, particularly with the manufacturing of today. Manufacturing is a whole lot different. It's certainly not your father's or grandfather's uh, manufacturing plant. Uh, we have to look at a new paradigm, even different than the 20th century. It's not about just finding the lowest cost labor. It's about integrating technology, particularly with uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Uh, it's transforming the factory floor. Uh, that means jobs can come back. Those jobs are going to be different, and you have to make sure you're training folks to be able to deal with these new technologies. And that's part of why I have this National Institute of Manufacturing, is to identify what those right. gaps are and fill it. And training is really, really but front look, and center. I want these jobs. We all, we all want, want more jobs, better paying jobs. Right. But there is this argument that this is last century's war, meaning that when you think about all of the robotics and, and AI and, and computers that are being, uh, and technology that is uh, going to be powering manufacturing, that maybe this is not a human game. Well, there's still humans. It's true there are fewer humans for every level of uh, productivity, but you'll still have humans that will monitor those robots, will monitor those advanced machines. The amount of uh, data you're going to get uh, off the factory floor now that machine learning can uh, process, but you'll still need humans uh, to direct that. So uh, the, the job changes, the, the nature of the job, the training changes. And that's why right now we have manufacturers all across Michigan who have job openings. Uh, but they don't have people with the right skills right. to fill those jobs. And that requires some uh, understanding of both robotics uh, as well as uh, machine learning and computers. Senator, I, I'm sure you, you know this very well. General Motors uh, you know, recently uh, cut some plants and, and, and a number of workers really trying to get ahead of things in many ways, but was criticized. Where do you land on that issue? Well, I think the criticism is warranted, and I think you'll see that brought up. You mentioned the UAW negotiations that are going on, that we have excess capacity in the United States, and yet part of that is because of capacity that increased in Mexico. In General Motors' case, building the new Blazer in Mexico, that Blazer could have been built in the United States with the excess capacity that existed in this country. And I think, you know, you have to have a focus on making it in the United States. You know, you mentioned Ford Motor Company in your uh, opening there. Uh, all of the vehicles that are sold in the United States by Ford are actually built in the United States. You can build vehicles in the United States with American labor uh, and do it in a cost-effective way. And, and so I think uh, you know, some of that criticism is very justified, and I think uh, you'll see it addressed in the labor negotiations. And when you have conversations with management at GM and management with other car, car companies uh, in, in your state, what do they tell you? Uh, well, uh, you know, I've raised these issues uh, with them, and uh, we're going to keep pushing to have that production here. Uh, I think they can do that, especially with the changing nature of manufacturing that we talked about earlier. The, these shop floors are a whole lot different. Uh, right. They're clean. They're highly automated. And the skilled workforce is in the United States. So we have the highest productivity per worker in the United States, and we have a highly trained workforce. We've got to make that workforce even more highly trained and expand the numbers that are going into manufacturing. And I believe we can compete with anybody right. in the world. How do you feel when you see President Trump call out a particular company? And I don't know if you saw Lockheed Martin actually changed its decision uh, as a function in large part of the president calling out that company in terms of where they're going to manufacture some of their products. Uh, well, well, I hope uh, you know, companies need to make decisions uh, based on uh, the economics, but I hope that they focus on the fact and understand the fact that American workers are still the most productive folks uh, in, the, in the world. Uh, we have to continue to increase that productivity, and they should make every effort to, to whatever, the, clearly whatever they're selling in the United States should be made in the United States. But because of the quality of the products that we produce here, that also makes them very good in the export market.